sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? This Hello. meeting is yes, being yes, recorded. Yes. Yes, Dr. Kale, I can hear you. I have just put mute because sometimes, you know, what we speak is not clear. Yes, yes. When I yes. start, I will uh, unmute. But I, I hope you can see me. Yes, yes, I can. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, uh, for accepting our invitation. And we are very happy that we will have the good lecture on uh, as your topic. Yes, uh, your event here is the, uh, the renowned topic, uh, which is for the battery. Uh, people would like to hear from you after a long time because uh, this time, this is the right time to talk on battery and people should know the uh, this prospect of this battery. So before, uh, I would like to introduce Vijay uh, uh, sir because uh, he is our friend uh, uh, in the NCL and uh, he was in NCL for uh, uh, almost uh, 20 years, sir, correct? 20, 24 years, and then he yes. joined um, um, as a director uh, uh, CCRI Karaikudi. Uh, Dr. Vijay Munan, uh, 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 he has done his PhD in Indian Institute of Science in 1989 and joined the National Chemical Laboratory. And he has published almost 270 papers and uh, 28 patents uh, in, uh, on his credit. And 25 students have been, um, he has guided 25 students, and 25 students are the, uh, the, the, the good numbers. You can see that uh, doing research in different projects and handling students is quite difficult in our research institutes, but he has um, guided 25 students. 25 students are there now, in, uh, the, the, the students are on the very well placed students. So, and uh, he, he, the area I was working was on uh, fuel cell as well as battery, and uh, he has done uh, he has done a lot of uh, work on so many materials, to, uh, from including from 1D to 2D and 3D materials for these specific applications. He has received uh, received many hours, many hours on his uh, credit. Uh, he is a fellow of uh, National Academy of Science, both uh, National Academy of Science. He uh, and he has received um, uh, the uh, uh, CSS, CRSI Brains Medal Award in 2004 and MRSI Gold Medal Award in 1996. And uh, fellow, uh, he, was, uh, he, uh, he has received fellow on 2018 as well as 2005. He has been, uh, he has been an uh, Ural Wright visiting professor in uh, MG University for since 2011 and is even Professor K.G. Doss Memorial Lecture in 2011. Professor Gurumurthy uh, Mangalam uh, Endowment Lecture, Annamalai University in 2012 and R.K. Barua Memorial Lecture in the uh, in Guwahati University in, uh, uh, in, in 2012. In 2013, Professor Chelikani uh, Chiranjeevi Endowment Lecture Award, Andhra University in 2015. IICT M1 Padmasi Dr. S.G. Sidhu Concerned Distinguished Speaker Award 2016. Now Dr. Vijay Monan is uh, in, uh, in, uh, in ISER uh, Tirupati and he is the Dean and r and Chair of Chemistry uh, at ISER. Today he is going to talk on uh, battery battles and eminent EV revolution in India. And sir, we would like to hear from you uh, regarding this uh, battery, battery, battery battle. It's very important today. Thank you very much. And I now request uh, Dr. Vijayman to uh, deliver his lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kale, for the warm introduction. Of course, I'm a Punaite. I still have a flat in Pune. And yes. it was also very gracious for Maharashtra Academy of Science to select me as a fellow when I was at NCL. So this is one of the first fellowship which came to me and I always cherish it. Of course, uh, it also gives me a great pleasure because National Science Day we are celebrating. Uh, uh, we look at uh, C.V. Raman and his great contributions to Indian science. This is particularly important when pseudoscience is rising we can see in various forms. So Raman's ideals, what Raman stood for, rigorous aspects of science, 
We need to relook at it. So the inspiring personalities like you see with Aman will always be there. They will always be there to motivate us whenever we have got crucial, whenever we reach crucial junction for our country's advancement. We are, we are having several problems. We have the uh, pandemic despite trying times and now there is a war also. So you see, we are all pressurized by various external factors and nothing is very clear about certainty about the future. However, in spite of this pandemic, there, are, there were some sectors where there was so much of growth. Electric vehicle was one such sector. Cumulative average growth was very high compared to many other cases. We had economy fell down, many problems were there. That's why I feel happy to talk about this. And India is going through this imminent electric vehicle revolution. For example, new budget, our honorable finance minister put forward battery swapping policies. We already have a charging platform. And every week and even every day, things are changing. What we thought as battery, electrolyte, cathode, anode, electrolyte, situation is so much changing that materials are coming up, new materials. And since CMET also has, you know, I've uh, been quite active for making new type of battery materials. In fact, uh, Dr. Kale, I am grateful because we had a common student who worked on batteries almost 20 years back. We tried to make some inner layer material that time, even 2D materials were not very popular. So we try to make a monomer in between some layered materials such as vanadium sulfide and then polymerize in those in the layer gap and use it for lithium batteries with a collaboration from France. I hope Dr. Kale, you remember, we got some fantastic values, but we did not pursue it. So with this, I once again feel at home to talk about battery revolution in our country. Because uh, again, you know, a lot of things are happening and Pune is also at the center of these uh, changes. I hope my slides are visible. Yes, sir. Yes, slides sir. are visible. Yeah. Is it uh, full screen now? Yes, yes. Yes. So I am sure I will not talk about the importance of Science Day. Science Day is on 28th February. And we have a science day function when Dr. Kale spoke to me, I mentioned that and our science day function is on 28th and we, Maharashtra Academy is president, Professor G.D. Yadav is our speaker. So I we have to get involved in that activity, introducing him. And that's the reason why I requested Dr. Kale to change it. And I'm, I'm grateful because you could accommodate my you know, request. So with this, I would, uh, since large number of students are there, I would talk, keeping, uh, electrochemical jargon, battery jargon minimum. I mentioned already that a lot of things are happening in our country. For example, renewable energy sector is booming in spite of problems from pandemic. Solar, wind, we have been able to fulfill all the commitments to global community. So I will start with the current energy landscape in our country, how buoyant it is, how fast it is moving. Every day, some things are happening in this case. Solar, wind, energy storage, I will then talk about the electric vehicle revolution in our country. I was a little bit of a dilemma, whether it is imminent or precocious. Imminent means just immediately it's going to happen. Precocious means it will go slowly, but already started to some extent. In this context, we need to look at electrochemical energy storage. Electrochemical energy storage has lots of attractive features. Number one, it does not follow the second law of thermodynamics. That means yeah, that yeah, maybe I request to mute. I request all of you to mute. So electrochemical energy storage. Kindly mute. Kindly mute. So electrochemical energy storage has several attractive features. Number one is that you don't have to follow Carnot theorem. That means the limitations in efficiency by second law of thermodynamics is not there. Delta G naught, free energy of the chemical reaction, is directly converted into electrical energy without the PDV term. That is the reason why efficiency is very high. Number two, no pollution at all. When we talk about it, the reactants and products are taken in a very, very environmental, if uh, uh, acceptable manner, there is no inherent. Typical example is a fuel cell. Hydrogen, oxygen, and you get water plus electrical energy. Ideally clean. And remember, India is also having a national hydrogen energy policy now. Policy has been just unveiled with a lot of uh, incentives for people to generate green hydrogen. So far, we have been making brown hydrogen, to some extent red hydrogen. But now, it is our um, mandate to go for green hydrogen. 
Clean hydrogen is very important because it is linked with our uh, sustainability. This year's science, the theme itself is integrated approach towards sustainability. So I am glad that integrated approach towards sustainability has been considered as a major theme because India wants to focus on all these activities. So I will talk a little bit on battery and fuel cell powered vehicle. I will not be talking about supercapacitors that in the QSA is different type of um, <clears throat> talk, but I am also uh, seeing the supercapacitor prototype fabrication at CMET Trichu uh, under Dr. Pramanik, although Dr. Pramanik has left I hope that this will be integrated into our country's electric vehicle program at some stage. Uh, ISRO has certified those materials, but we must make a larger packs of supercapacitors useful for electric vehicle. Hybrid vehicles, now you come to lithium ion, sodium ion, or what else? We will talk about that. So there is a require, genuine requirement, requirement for ultra capacitor banks, but I will not go to the details. I will talk a little bit more since we have a large number of students about battery battles. There have been battles because corporates are greedy about making money, whether it is Tesla or it is General Motors or Nissan. You will see, if you look at the history, historical evolution of lithium ion batteries, there were so much of cheating, there were so much of deception, whether someone tried to try to deceive university and somebody will uh, steal the data from laboratory in underhand manner. Somebody will put something and say that I am a poor man and I will work in your laboratory and put a right, uh, um, send the biodata requesting just uh, experience and then eventually they steal all the data send it back to the company and later make a lot of patents and a lot of money so as far as india is concerned we are just started this there are several barriers for a wider deployment of electric vehicle but many of them are disappearing and the government has been very proactive many many rules just recent budget is one example where so much of so for national uh, hydrogen energy generation and storage and then we also have production linked incentives. So you will see all these will change next to two to three years, maybe even five years. The landscape of electric vehicle will increase in a very, very in a major fashion. So we talk about India's energy landscape. All of you know that we have around 1.4 billion people. This will soon become 1.6 billion, but still at various. So you go from you know, 100 kilometers from Pune or any big city, you will see still people are having difficulties. The energy per capita energy, energy consumed by one person in one day is very small compared to the per capita consumption in Europe or America or even in China. That is why there is a problem. We have got elite cities where so much of energy is consumed while most of the other places where you will still see that less than 10 kilowatt hour is consumed. Agrarian lifestyle, even the fuel comes from cow dung. So the energy consumption Still, we need on an average level, we need to have higher and higher. This is one of the issues. Number two, we would like to become a 5 trillion economy by 2023. That means just one or two years. We can have always change one or two years. Doesn't matter. But the number of vehicles are soaring. Just last year, we had 20 vehicles per thousand people. Now it would have become already 25, 30. And hence, we have a problem. Problem of traffic jam, problem of air pollution. That is why the agrarian lifestyle of the rural versus energy intense lifestyle of the urban. So agrarian lifestyle of the rural versus there's a conflict. It's a cultural conflict, it's an economic conflict, and also there is a cultural conflict. That is why this conflict is very important if you want to look at the integrated approach towards sustainability, what is mentioned in this, uh, in, in this Science Day celebration. So one side we see agrarian lifestyle with minimum energy consumption and we have its own problems while all of a sudden you will see bigger mega cities. I'm sure all of you know, this is Delhi, look at the traffic. You can identify even if I don't say which cities, 32 million people. And this city is fighting with Beijing in terms of pollution and in, uh, in terms of population, it is fighting with Tokyo. Right now, Tokyo is number one most popular city in the world. Tokyo has around 35 million people, while Delhi already 32, but there's a strong growth rate. By 2030, Delhi will overtake Tokyo. Delhi will, Delhi will have 36 million people. Now, the problem is, this is only one city. Similarly, we have many cities. We call it as mega cities when it crosses 15 million uh, benchmark. Mumbai, look at 21 million people. So as the growth increases, how are we able to sustain energy generation, energy storage, and energy deployment. 
That is where the problem is. One side, India is growing very strongly with the number of vehicles, number of mega cities. Other side, agrarian in average, rate of con uh, the consumption of energy is very small. That is why we have got several paradoxes. Look at uh, Bangalore, Chennai. All these cities are growing horizontally as well as vertically. Pune, I'm sure I'm glad we are all from Pune. Look at Pune, we have a two-wheeler bridge that is also chopped up now. We have Pune is perhaps only, only one of the cities where number of vehicles, urban vehicles are more than that of number of people. Globally itself, you can talk about it. So many two-wheelers mainly. Urban Pune to 3.9 population, while we have 3.99 vehicle, vehicles. So all these will contribute to pollution. There is no wonder that if you take a picture, image from outside space, this is a spacecraft. There have been several spacecrafts, Cassini, European Space Agency. All this will show us an image like this for India. It's very sad that India's image is more or less like what you see in Africa, Central Africa here. Of course, there is small in US also, California, urban smoke comes into picture, but we are you know, not in a good company. There is no wonder that we are, uh, if you look at the environmental quality index, we are very poor. Somewhere 150, 140, even China is much, much better. So we have this type of problems. This is an image taken by Copernicus uh, uh, spacecraft, partly because of formic acid, nitrate, NO2, ozone, SO2, methane, all these aerosols, they are responsible. So one side, there is an voracious hunger for more and more energy because country is developing. Other side, already our environmental quality is very poor. You can look at these parrots talking to each other. Uh, this parrot says, honestly, guys, I am not a crow. I am also a parrot, but I came from Delhi because Delhi is a place where you have so much of air pollution. So this is the country's map. It's one of the reason map. You can see air we breathe, partly because of energy, transportation, energy generation. And in addition, we have got many other problems. I will not go to the details, global temperature rise. So due to all these reasons, India has committed to reduce our carbon emission dramatically. We say everything possible in our arsenal, we will do in such a way that global warming will not go more than 1.5 degrees. And India has done very well in this area, last five years, last 10 years. But many other countries have not been able to complete their uh, uh, pledge. Whatever commitment they made, they have not been. Even G7 countries, India is the only country which, which has fulfilled all the obligations. Similarly, renewable energy is concerned. Our energy, energy level sector is very strong. Last five years, so much of energy be generated. You remember, there was an initial commitment, 175 gigawatt by 2022 by Prime Minister, 100 from solar, 50 from wind. We have, over, we have, we have surpassed all this. Now, in the most recent uh, development is in COP26, Prime Minister committed that we'll make 500 gigawatt by 2025. In addition to that, we have several programs where CO2 can be captured, CO2 can be converted into widely divided chemicals. And now we have National Hydrogen Energy Mission. 80% of all the hydrogen we generate will be green and green hydrogen by 2050. So these commitments may seem like a tall order, but looking at India's population and India's diverse you know, uh, sectors, it is possible that we will be able to achieve it. Remember all these failures, COP23, 24, many countries have not been able to fulfill whatever commitment they made. This is the reason why India is at the threshold, at the tipping point of having an electric vehicle revolution. I started in small, small ways. That is why I would I mentioned about precocious electric vehicle revolution. Look at what is happening in the country. Major changes happened due to private sector. Reliance has come in a big way. For example, 75,000 crores, mergers, acquisitions, some of them are Chinese companies. Most recently, Faraday on from UK, they have been able to uh, completely buy it. Faraday on is uh, one of the most important sodium and battery manufacturers from UK. This is one example. Adani Green Energy, they, they, they have 25,000 crores committed. Tata Motors, 15,000 crores committed for EV market. Mahendra and Mahendra, along with LG, uh, along with LG. And then there is also a request for proposal from government for production linked incentives. That means alternate cell chemistries, government says that you put a big proposal if it is the mega level of battery manufacturing with some amount from country. So outsource, five, first next to five years, this much percentage, seven years, this much percentage, eventually 70% must be from indigenous components. That is there, government will try to 
finance. That is why this this was a major game changer, PLI. And it's happening. It is happening a little slow because industry, uh, as usual, you know, not very happy. They wanted, you know, uh, more and more SOPs, but now it has happened. There are several projects with the government where PLI will be implemented. So this is true, but look at the other side. Who are the worst carbon emitters? Number one, China. Number two, US. Number three, India, because of our population. So you do, I mentioned to you that our targets, we have 1.4 billion people and we want development in many places, many parts in our country. MNR has done a, a laudable work because they have been able to go for electrification, rural electrification. So being the third biggest emitter, we have a moral or a conscious, we have a conscious um, decision to reduce emission. That is why many other countries were asking, when are you making zero emission? Zero emission, US uh, mentioned this 2050. China was also waiting for a little bit of time because huge population. Then China mentioned 2060, there was no way. So last COP26 meeting, our prime minister announced that 2070 is where we are going to make carbon neutral. 2070 may seem a far-fetched uh, time for us now, but it will come very quickly. So due to all this, many countries, for example, look at this. In COP26 meeting itself, UK uh, brings this, US 2050, Saudi Arabia and EU 2050, China 2060. So we have been able to give 2070, looking at a realistic scenario in our country. We also have many other commitments. 500 gigawatt non-fossil fuel power generation, 50% of energy requirement with renewable by 2030, reduce total projected carbon emission, 1 billion tons from now to 2030, reduce carbon intensity of the economy to below 45% by 2030, and eventually carbon neutral by 2070. These are all realistic. I'm sure that we have, because we have a very clear roadmap. In this, if you look at EV will play a critical role in achieving these targets. EV is essential for sustainable transport. Number one, EV promotes sustainable energy use, reduction in pollution, and there is no need of you know, uh, spending the time on importing petroleum. That is one of the important advantages. So the, the operational cost will come down. Number one, import will come down. Number two, efficiency of transport will be increased. And number three, environmental quality will be very high. So pollution reduction will be there. That is the reason why in densely populated areas, there is no other alternative. We need to go for EV. Earlier, we were talking about hybrid cities, uh, electric vehicle and villages, IC engine. Now, but that is not getting favor because today's villages become tomorrow cities. That is why there, have, there, there, there was an issue related to that. In addition to that fuel saving, Niti Aayog has estimated that a large scale shift from EV by 2030 can save 876 million metric tons of oil equivalent for 20 lakh core and giga ton of CO2 emission. So this is a very strong incentive for us to go for electric vehicle. Lastly, cost saving, efficient transportation system will be very important for us for increasing our sustainability. India is about to embrace what we call it a circular economy. Of course, there are minor issues about recyclability, but there is no way that we can't avoid it. The whole world is going for circular economy, circular chemistry, circular technology. So a shift to shared mobility, electric mobility where people share this travel, uh, um, uh, what do you call uh, the, the mode of travel, this will help us and India roughly spend 15% of GDP on transportation compared to 15% in Europe. So due to all this, you can say that by 2017 to 2030 is the time where we have already predicted that the market will go 300 billion. And in India, more than one third of the global demand happens. Two wheeler, three wheeler, four wheeler. If you look at cumulatively, whatever vehicles we manufacture in the world, one third of that customer will be in the country. That is why everybody is looking at India. They are lying to come and open market, start manufacturing. So our cumulative requirement will be 2,410 gigawatt between 2026 to 2030. All these have been calculated by Bloomberg, New Energy Finance, because the finance model, revenue model also will change. We will always have petrol pumps uh, uh, equivalent to that battery swapping stations and charging platforms. All these are also happening. Look at a major push. During budget 2020 to 23, government announced plans to introduce a battery swapping policy. This is just last week uh, in Lok Sabha, when the budget was announced, battery swapping policy and interoperability standards for EV adoption was made for the first time. The responsibility has been given to DST and Bureau of Indian Standards together. 
under the supervision of niti ayog so these are all things which show that india is changing that is why i thought of talking to you about the battery revolution similarly you look at what is happening every week something is happening for example you can see i am sure you have heard about byd build your dreams one of the major global manufacturers of electric vehicles of course from china so ev manufacturer byd has entered indian market they are going to have not one or two 17 new types of vehicles all with different type of batteries mostly with lfp lithium ion phosphate because it is cheaper now i mentioned about this production linked incentive scheme but electric vehicles also need semiconductor chips we had a semiconductor chip shortage and it was affecting electric vehicle market now this Uh, scarcity is over and the government has also given some new initi in uh, initiative 76000 crore initiative by union cabinet for semiconductor and display board production because ev is needed very badly most of these although at the heart of the electric vehicle it is batteries they need to be controlled there will be display more they they need to have a software you will always have a software which will uh, which will allow you to have no pollution autonomous vehicles are also there so all these cases you will need semiconductor chips each state goa haryana himachal pradesh maharashtra has implemented this ev policy long ago but some of the states are joining recently similarly funding raised from various industries 10484 crore equity funding raised from various segments related to transportation biggest funding raised by tata motors 7563 crores almost like 1000 million us dollars and then government also expects within next 3 years to have 400000 charging stations 3 years may become 5 years but even 5 years if you have 400000 charging stations there is also a revenue model business model petrol pump will not be there instead of that this and people will give store batteries these batteries can be uh, rectified or repaired in this place so all these investments will boost electric vehicle market indian rupee 8500 crore in ev ma ma manufacturing sector and globally right now you say around 3 million electric vehicles are there in europe in us so we have also enough expertise about and one of the most attractive for customer is you don't have to send to the repair garage most of the ev problems can be detected by using you know just like our online talk we can find out and it can be repaired very easily these are all the advantages for customer so in india you can see we, we itself 1000 137000 registered evs in last quarter itself increased 46 percentage so despite the pandemic 46 percent increase happened in ev maruti suzuki toyota electric mid size uh, they are going to launch a new vehicle so globally itself sales exponentially increase just one example i will tell you in india last quarter you see december november november october so many new vehicles they are all announced their launch in our country because we have a huge market consumers are there bmw ix model x drive 40 battery specification 76.6 kilowatt hour range is 425 km of course forget about the motor details cost is 1.16 crore because this is a high end vehicle you go to byd the chinese manufacturer 71.7 kilowatt hour 415 km range top speed is not very high 130 but 29.6 which can be afforded many of our mid size cars 25 to 30 lakh people spent and this is where the affordability come into picture of course there is an issue about reliability of byd but i'm sure that that can is probably with time it will improve porsche and taycan they have a higher segment again 1.5 to 2.3 crore seven variants so imagine this happened in last november and october mini cooper again is a high end version 50 to 50 lakh so in a country like india look at so many number of new new vehicles variants are coming as far as manufacturing is concerned lot of announcements some of them have not realized because there are issues announcement is fine as a media but real it happens or not we need to check after a couple of years for example in gurgaon xnri started manufacturing 240 megawatt high temperature battery storage solutions and um, this is again you know uh, with a collaboration from china by 2023 they talk about it charging platform so far the largest charging platform was in mumbai washi but now just last week we had a new charging platform largest india's electric vehicle charging station set up in gurgaon 100 electric vehicles can be charged around the clock 100 charging points and this again has interesting business models 
For example, electric vehicle as a part of pilot project of the installed charging stations on the Delhi Jaipur and Delhi Agra highways, make them as e highway, and you can you know license, getting necessary support, commissioning, installation, electrification, safety certification, all that will be associated with a small charging station. This charging station is initiated by Niti Aayog uh, um, personnel. You can see now this has happened last week. Ninety six operational charging ports in EV. And 24 hours, this will be there. Trucks, small buses. Look at uh, another interesting development. First batch of BYD, Billiard Drones, E6 electric vehicles were delivered. 30 units in India. Chennai, Hyderabad, Kochi, Delhi, and Mumbai, Ahmedabad. These cities will have electric vehicles. These vehicles were based on Chinese technology. However, some parts were uh, made in our country. They have a blade battery technology where they use lithium iron phosphate and new benchmarks. They say it is safe. They have new parameters in terms of reliability, safety, performance, power density. Imagine all over the world, they have last year 93,000 vehicles BYD sold. Now, in a similar manner, there are other industries. Toyota, Innova, Krista is coming up. Approximate price will be 29 uh, lakh. So when someone gives you 25 to 29, and Mahindra is also coming up with LG batteries, this is the reason why I told that, look, there will be a battery revolution in our country. How much of that will be indigenous? That is a big question mark. And the ranges are fine, 520 kilometer with BYD. Similarly, electric bus manufacturing project, new projects for electric mobility in Teligo, I'm sure, Pune. Pune is going to become a nerve center of these, some of these developments. There's a 75 acre facility where we are going to have buses manufactured in Pune for the entire country. 5,000 crore investment, greenfield electric bus manufacturing projects in Pune. Groundbreaking ceremony started recently uh, by a London-based cautious e-mobility group with Pinnacle Solutions. Pune-based Pinnacle Mobility Solutions, EV company promoted by Pinnacle Industry. So this is why lots of things are happening in our country. Definitely, this is why we talk about the imminent electric vehicle revolution. All these vehicles are going to be available in our roads. Whether it is how much is indigenous is a different matter. All this happened because we must not forget the material revolution. One side, we have got technology making all this perfect. But at the heart of it, most of these vehicles, 50 percentage, sometimes 60 percentage, 40 to 60 percentage cost belongs to battery. And battery costs plummeted exponentially. 2000, it was very $2,000 per kilowatt in 2005. Now it has come down so much, 130, 120. People still talk about 100, 100 has not reached. So why did it happen? Partly because of nanotechnology, partly because of materials. So we have been able to make amazing type of materials, atom by atom, molecule by molecule, nanotechnology was instrumental. At the same time, software development, computational modeling, because many of these cases, you also need very strong computational tools. So one, Primary reason is decrease in the cost of battery batteries. Battery costs exponentially reduced because of the availability of materials, more affordable materials. And this is an average. You look at, it doesn't matter. It doesn't depend upon only one brand. It depends on all these brands. Number one, we told you about materials. Materials important for batteries, fuel cells, all electrochemical storage. When we look at electric vehicle revolution, we need to look at the materials for all these devices. Electrochemical energy generation storage, I mentioned to you already that they have several attractive features. No pollution at all. They are silent. Thermodynamic efficiency is very high. So electrochemical to energy storage, we look at three types, batteries, fuel cells, and supercapacitors. Batteries and fuel cells will have very high energy density and very poor power density. Supercapacitor will have very high power density, very poor. So that is why it's complementary. We need batteries and fuel cells to be coupled with the supercapacitors. Then only we will get power density and energy density matching. And all these devices we compare with parameters such as energy density, power density, rate at which you put energy and take it out, cycle life, self discharge, and we need to look at the environmental impact and reliability, safety, cost. Batteries and fuel cells are very good for storing energy, but they fail miserably if you put energy at a very fast rate 
either you put it or you retrieve it that is where super capacitors are needed so 80% of battery is with 20% super capacitor 80% of fuel cell with 20% super capacitor these are the hybrid power sources which are important for actual electric vehicle please remember on a unit power this is 10 times expensive than these two that is why we need 80 20 70 30 it also depends on the actual application so i mentioned about battery powered vehicle similar things are happening in fuel cell powered vehicle also only issue is that still they are expensive almost all automobile manufacturers are ready with their fuel cell powered vehicle fuel cell powered vehicle has a better carbon footprint than battery primary reason is batteries are as good as the electricity which you use it for charging if the electricity is coming from fossil fuel then we don't have a good carbon footprint while on the fuel cell what happened fuel cells they don't have that problem because hydrogen and oxygen in in combination you get energy and you will get electricity electricity and water so electric energy generated only problem is hydrogen if hydrogen is available that is why this needs to be synchronized with our national hydrogen road map if green hydrogen is available we have made a commitment 80% of the hydrogen will be green by 2030 that is why i am telling that fuel cell powered vehicles are much more cleaner than battery powered vehicle because hydrogen if green hydrogen is available they are very ideal no carbon uh, emission at all while battery powered vehicles if the electricity is obtained from a non renewable then we have a problem however look at all these 2022 honda clarity ready uh, uh, for market launch toyota again very important mirai or many other new versions they also have various versions and they the cost is more or less 49500 and they they also sometimes they lease it for you know you have to pay, pay per year something like that so this is also an area where lot of new materials are coming up at the heart of these uh, fuel cell powered vehicle fuel cell you need hydrogen green hydrogen is available whether you need a reformer to convert so if you have green hydrogen you don't need a reformer at all but there are critical materials you need a membrane which needs to be much cheaper you need electrocatalyst some of the 2d materials you don't need platinum at all platinum can be completely dispensed off from a fuel cell these days platinum free fuel cell can be made but membrane there are issues we still don't have cheap membrane nafion is still what some people use sometimes polybenzimidazole so all these issues are related to materials and the catalyst design is so uh, uh, incredible you can make 3 nanometer platinum on that you make two layers of something else so that the surface engineering all these catalyst design is a marvel you can make them shape dependent make a cube make a rod make a sphere their catalytic activity will vary and sometimes you put one mono layer of platinum on a huge large amount of cro chromium or iron it acts acts as if it is full platinum your fooling nature so the design strategy for this electro catalyst itself is very interesting and the same strategy is used for fuel cells electrolysis electrolysis mind you they give you green hydrogen and metal layer batteries so this is a very fertile area where so many types of amazing materials have come up challenges involved make a stack large scale by preparation stack engineering and of course hydrogen is still an issue if you are able to generate from renewable then it is perfectly fine compared to fuel cell powered vehicle battery powered vehicles are much cheaper you can look at a comparison battery electric battery powered electric vehicle and fuel cell powered electric vehicle storage media this is lithium ion batteries presently used but eventually you may use sodium or something else which is cheaper hydrogen is used here energy density is 200 watt hour per kg while here you have much more 300 sometimes 350 refueling time here you need hours because assuming that you need a charging platform while here it takes only minutes if you consider battery swapping then this can be taken care temperature batteries have lot of problems low temperature degradation issues are plenty and still safety is not guaranteed there was a last week there was an explosion one of the bases where charging platform everything got uh, exploded so there are intrinsic safety issues low temperature problems like india uh, country like india if you go to the himalayan side performance will come down charging efficiency suddenly drops with the temperature if you go to minus 10 minus 20 there are serious issues that issues are not much for fuel cell fuel cells because of the intrinsic kinetics you will not have any problem of that of this sort efficiency of course battery powered vehicles you get 90% and while here only 60% and infrastructure you need for both 
hydrogen platforms, hydrogen stations are also being developed. There are somewhere around 100 hydrogen stations, hydrogen stations in our country, but government has a plan to go ahead with this. So look at the short range, battery electric vehicles are more dominant. You go to long range, 800, 600 trucks, fuel cells are much better. I'm sure most of you know, in Germany, there is an Alstrom company, there's a train running on fuel cell. This is going on last two years, no, without any major problem. This train uh, completely powered by polymer electrolyte fuel cell is running and there are no inoperability issues at all. No. Cost-wise, you can see there's a big difference because lithium-ion battery costs fell. 6% between even one year, 2020 to 2021 itself, 6% came down. And Bloomberg New Energy Finance predicts that slightly it will increase now compared to what we have now because of problems related to war as well as problems related to mining of cobalt, nickel, etc, etc, etc. So $132 per kilowatt hour in 2021, it was 140 in 2020. Now probably 10 to 20 percent increase is predicted even for LFP type of BYD type of Chinese cells, partly because higher raw material costs. So people expect that there will be a slight increase. Another exciting development is the first book written by a machine is on lithium batteries. It is called Beta Writer. The computer wrote the book. So machine language was used to write the book because these areas are intrinsically interdisciplinary. You need mechanical engineers who will predict the expansion of these materials. You need electric engineers to look at the charging and what part of a rate control and the thermal engineering because heat generation for a vehicle is very high. So thermal management, what type of cooling you need. So if you look at the integrated approach, you will need all type of expertise. You need chemical engineers, you need electrical engineers. That is why you need physicists. That is the reason why this book was written. This is the first book in subject written by a machine. Of course, fiction, poems, etc. machines have written. And no wonder you based on this, you will see new, new versions. GM or Tesla 2022, new models. The, there are still barriers. They need affordable battery, uh, battery. Batteries are little more expensive even now. Maybe a, a, a large consumption will reduce the cost. This is one of the fondest, uh, what you call uh, the, the wishes of uh, uh, automobile companies. But how long it can, we have no idea about it. Availability is a major problem. Uh, steady improvement in consumption. For example, you can see now the $100 benchmark given by DOE, also by Tesla, we have not been able to reach it. Scarce and expensive materials, cobalt, nickel, cobalt prices became four times in the last two years. You can see. So that is why there are issues. Many people are looking at cobalt free uh, cathode materials. So I will uh, skip all the elementary aspects. If somebody has any uh, question, they can ask me. And we talk it as shuttlecock batteries, swing batteries, rocking chair batteries, because lithium ions are stored in this. They move between the anode and cathode, and there are uh, several computational tools available to look at now. Availability is a major issue. What I show here is the atomic number, element, and then the cost and the abundance. You can see now where lithium stands. Lithium is somewhere here and where aluminum. So many people believe Israeli, there is a Finergy company uh, strongly bets on aluminum for the future. And there are companies like depend on sodium. So you will see these volumetric capacity, cost and abundance in the same plot. In our present system, the energy storage, especially for electric vehicle is completely dominated by lithium ion battery. Safety is still not foolproof. There are explosions in many companies. Transportation restrictions are there from one country to other country, geopolitical problems, because most of these are in a lithium belt, Chile, Argentina, Bolivia. China has leased these mines for next 200 years, 300 years. So we'll have difficulty. Constrained resource supply is a problem, especially for lithium, cobalt, nickel, etc. High cost. And there is no recycling infrastructure, limited recycling, which is very important for circular economy. And then other requirements are there. That is, these are some of the problems. Lithium, you can see now lithium availability, Chile, so much is available. You can see there is nowhere we are. US, Brazil, Portugal, China has some amount, Argentina, Australia. So technology trends, again, I will skip all this. Some of you are working on lithium batteries, you know more on the ground level realities of making this compound. LCO, NMC, NCA, LMO, LFP, LTO. These are all the materials, their specific energy and 
sometimes these materials are designed atom by atom in the laboratory. That is why there is so much of focus on making solid by structures. Solid electrolytes, safety is assured. However, there are problems of these because these are new areas. We don't still have a good satisfactory solid electrolyte which will give you good performance. People look at composites, polymeric and ceramic electrolytes. LLZO, very well known celebrated material, but many industrial level, it has not uh, fulfilled the expectations coming from the laboratory. LLZO, a ceramic material, lithium, Li7, Li3, ZR, Otoy. India also, there are a few people working on this, lithium ion solid electrolyte. Similarly, lithium aluminum, thallium. Polymeric is concerned. People are still looking at polymer materials, smart electrolyte, smart electrolyte, which will also be like a, a color change when battery is about to, uh, let's say, explode. Temperature, inherent temperature sensing can be included in the battery by doing what is called LCST. There are the, the, the thermochromic uh, type of materials embedded to make a lithium containing polymer electrolyte. Again, I will not go to details. We saw cathode and similarly, there are several new anode materials in the pipeline. Most of people bet on silicon, silicon, especially nano wire where volume expansion is minimum and then graphite, SIOX, SNO2. So like, several new materials are actually new materials are crowded in this um, uh, landscape of lithium, mostly in the cell level. Battery level, there are issues in all these cases. So electrolyte is another important area. Many people develop new electrolytes, fluorinated electrolytes, because you can also have some different type of conversion um, cathodes, fluorinated materials. Then electrolyte also is fluorinated. There's a structural and structural compatibility. A lot of theoreticians use DFT methods to calculate what is the stability, where it bre breaks. Again, I will not go to details. I only want to give you a feeling that present day lithium ion batteries, materials are engineering marvel. You decide at an atomic level and make for example, three nanometer coating on of carbon, graphite carbon or graphene type of carbon on lithium ion phosphate, which is porous, which should allow Li plus to go and come without um, obstructing other processes, other mass transfer processes, other heat generation. That is why sometimes when you make it in the lab, you will get it. When you make in large level, there are a lot of problems. I will skip all this, but please remember that the engineering marvels are there for modern lithium cathode design when so many things sometimes you can make very very accurate precise coarser particles you can selectively find which site it goes that is why sometimes 2d materials are important 2d materials will have edge states zigzag edge state armchair edge state so you can decide which edge state is important for li to go how many sites are there lithium nmr lithium uh, um, uh, dft calculation to find out the energy differences where lithium goes and eventually you will see staging, what are the, whether lithium comes. Again, I will not go to details. All this started with a major battle at Oxford University. Professor John B. Goodenough, I'm sure you have all heard about the Nobel Prize given to him a few years earlier. So in, you, in Oxford University, he started all this development. Oxford University was not interested to even uh, take a patent. And that is the same time where Stanley Whittingham in Exxon Mobile started working on all sulfides. Every week there was an explosion. So after some time they stopped him to even, they asked him to stop the work because so much of explosions. And one of the smart guys, you know, uh, he used the carbon, used the, the, the good enough inventions and developed an uh, Akira Yoshina, made different type of lithiated carbon and made the first cell, which Sony uh, manufactured, LCO, lithium cobalt oxide. After his disappointing time in Oxford University, John B. Goodenough moved to Texas, Texas Austin, and he started work. That is where a lot of cheating happened in a big way. Many people worked with Goodenough. Akshaya Party was an Indian working on olivine compounds. That's the time where one person wrote to him, Okada, Shigeto Okada. He was um, essentially an employee of NDT, Nippon Technical, you know, the, that's a, like a, a telephone company in Japan. He uh, camouflaged himself, wrote as a poor man and worked in with good enough and stole all the data, whatever he made. Every week, he used to send it to that. And eventually, good enough was in India for a meeting. Good, good enough and Paddy, they found patents from this guy with Panasonic. And eventually, he went as vice president of Panasonic. So you can see now what type of cheating happened. And good enough could not make any money because parallelly that time, an MIT company called Chiang made some two these patents and started one, two, three. Became, which, is, which became very famous. So a lot of patent suits, 
between courts. There was also a big fight between Tesla and GM for the priority. China is now world leader because it is not by a straight, simple process. China found who is the best Chinese person working in lithium batteries in somewhere around 1990. They found that uh, there was a person working on Mercedes uh, as an engineer. He, put, he called, took him back to China through his teacher in Shanghai University and they made him as the science minister, his Wan Gang. And then they sent him to Argonne National Laboratory as Chinese minister, where he had seen how these processes and all these came. That is why I'm telling that, look, there have been plenty of battery battles. Even Nissan GM, Nissan uh, has a, uh, what do you call the leaf battery. So you can see a lot of startups will come. Many Indians were in, in, involved. From BHU, there was in Sujit Kumar, and he raised a lot of money for NMC version 2 and they will show some very nice results to GM. GM will take it and then they will say, I will, my battery will work 5,000 5, cycles. And GM will see nothing is happening. They go to court. In court, they will say 5,000 cycles means 5,000 motorcycles, not battery cycles. So this is the type of cheating happens on that. I will skip because there have been many, many such incidents. Envaya system uh, with a huge uh, contract with Nissan, Tesla GM battery about various type of cars. Tesla will find out one of the brightest engineers, they will pay 10 times salary and get them here. So you can see corporate greed most uh, explicitly seen in this area. It, there have been several court cases. Good enough itself, you know, uh, Tesla, Texas Austin put a 500 million uh, co, uh, with the Panasonic, eventually settled out, outside the court. University got a lot of money, but good enough did not get. That is why when good enough got Nobel Prize, many of us who know him, we felt very happy. At least some justice was paid, you know. From past 20, 25 years, a uh, well-known condensed matter physicist like good enough contributed so much, and not even one money, every, not even one rupee. Every, every corporate is making so much of money. That is why there was some natural justice, although at very old age, he got Nobel Prize. So now what happened is people are looking for consortium. Japan realized that they have nowhere in the market. Once long ago, 2013, they had 70% of the market. China is the market leader now. So they found a consortium, Toyota, Nissan, Panasonic, Honda. They all put together enough amount with specifications. Solar state lithium batteries, 2030, they would manufacture with 800 kilometer range. 20, 2025, 550. So well-defined targets, they are all working. And they get support from many other companies, Bosch, Fisker, Samsung, LG, GM. Solid power in Colorado is another startup betting on solid state batteries. So there is so much of focus on solid state batteries. Barriers are still there, large level of deployment. Current cost is three to five times more higher. Safety, unless you have a solid state, all the other liquids, somehow there will be thermal runaway, there will be inflammable electrolytes. Those are all the problems. Life also we need to improve. Low mineral reserve. No major battery manufacturing industry in our country. Now we, we saw all this, but how much of it will realize we need to wait and watch. And there is no proper recycling facilities. A lot of innovation happens. A new company has come in India. They make this, this is what is called Z scooter. So there are only two wheels and you can move with the normal uh, type of two wheeler. You can go ahead and you can pack them, put it in your suitcase and walk also. So a very, very great innovation, but they use uh, lithium ion batteries for that. They use actually Tesla's model S super lithium ion battery is used for this, along with a touch activated adjustable light system. So a lot of software development also happens in along with this material development. Right now, if you look at most of these materials, 51 percentage for the cathode cost, 24 percentage uh, anode, and anode is 12 percent, 24 for the uh, manufacturing part, electrolyte, all those things, separators, electrolyte 12 and 7. Four, three. So this is just a breakup, but we think that this cost structure will change. 101 was not realized. So manufacturing is major issue, 24 percentage, whether quarter, road, and we are talking about larger manufacturing. China has an edge over this, China, Korea, Taiwan. That's why India, Indian manufacturing industry, they are little apprehensive about tying up with Indian companies, unless you make a major manufacturing, because that is where uh, the problem is. That is the, the, this is an example where Reliance took up Faraday on. Faraday on was manufacturing sodium ion batteries. So sodium has a lot of advantages, much cheaper than uh, maybe is equal to lead acid batteries once you can get it. So uh, Reliance went 100 million pounds and came back with sodium ion. 
Sodium is okay because 300 times more sodium is present in India itself. Global adoption rate of electric vehicle is currently is slow. So they believe that if they can have a five-fold jump in sodium by 2030. So this is their bet on sodium ion batteries along with many other things. One of the problems we face is recycling. Millions of electric cars are coming. What will happen to all these batteries? Even swapping second life batteries, once electric vehicle, the critical uh, application is over, you can use these batteries for many other cases, many other stationary applications. That is why second life is going to be very important. Recycling is going to be important. Recycling has many other challenges because unless you know the brand, if it is LFP, easy for you to look at it. So we can't mix up LFP with NMC with a different type of materials. Similarly, we can't mix even anode. If you have a graph, a graphene related or graphite related anode and somebody has silicon, somebody has tin oxide, you can't mix it up. That is why recycling has inherent difficulties. More importantly, recycling at present is not a business proposition because there is no money in recycling. Unless a manufacturer, manufacturer lithium battery is manufactured in the country and they give a promise that the recycled materials are taken up, I will take it. Otherwise, nobody will come. So there is no um, um, profit in this business. That is the reason why government needs to incentivize recycling industry for lithium batteries. Future developments are also very important. Look at the roadmap. We have got many companies working on these systems. Lithium sulfur, Oxys Energy, Sion Power, they are all startups. The solid state batteries I mentioned to you, so many startups are there. Quantum scape, solid energy, ionic material, metal air batteries, lithium air, zinc air, iron air, air is plenty, iron is plenty. So if iron air systems are available, so people are working on the aluminum air, Finergy is an Israeli, Israel company working on iron air and similarly fuel cells. So you can look at it 2020 and 2025, what is the roadmap? 25 lithium air, increase in manufacturing. So these are the things which we look at towards the future. So let me just summarize what I wanted to tell you. India is poised to have a lithium ba I mean, battery revolution in the country, electric vehicle revolution. Batteries will come from India or not is not very clear. We have got indigenous technologies, but they are not mature. We have got several parallel technologies. There's a CSR technology, there's an ISRO technology, there's an ARCI or DSC technology, but these technologies, industries don't have confidence. Number one, the scales are very small. Number two, the materials are small. Some of them may not have patent, but there are small, small issues. But pulling up all these people together, that is a huge thing because even if you adopt foreign technology, you need competent people. You need knowledgeable people. Godrej, for example, last year, Godrej, Godrej saw a very attractive nature paper on zinc MnO2 rechargeable battery published in Nature 2 2020 uh, by one of our you know, uh, um, Indian professors working in New York State University, CUNY, State University of New York. They got attracted. They started even making something in Mumbai, but did not work out. They thought zinc is there, MnO2 is there, zinc MnO2 with reasonably good rechargeable behavior. But that was shown in the paper, but actual manufacturing. So Godrej maybe have shelved, I don't know, uh, but uh, I was uh, consulted once to look at those materials and I send my opinion. So remember many things will happen, but there is no doubt that electric vehicle will be there two to three years, large number of electric vehicles, 25 lakhs. Now itself, uh, Tata say they can sell you an electric vehicle. Ma uh, Mahindra says 25 to 30 lakh. Price comes a little more than I'm sure. The India has got large number of mid-sized consumers, middle-class people. They would all go for electric vehicle due to intrinsic advantages. And then government is also providing some of those benefits. So let me, I just summarize Developments in our country, looking at the energy landscape in a very broad manner, focusing on some material issues on cathode, anode, and batteries, and logistic issues about recycling and charging platforms. Several breakthroughs are still needed to secure the future of affordable EVs. Recycling infrastructure is badly needed. Improvement of cell performance is needed. High performance materials, fluoride materials, similarly, SNO2 materials, nano wires, volume expansion, temperature, thermal generation, th what do you call it as um, thermal runaway, thermal generation, 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 thermal with the coordination, thought planning, public-private partnership, and there is a need for recalibration because technology is changing every day. 
there is a built-in level of obsolescence in these type of materials. Today's material will not be there after one week. That is why we need to have a need for recalibration. And that is an intrinsic problem by the manufacturing industry. They are confused. Which material? Which material? Will it be there for a long time? That is why an established player such as BYD or Tesla or Mario Suzuki has paired with some of these people in India. They are pl planning a manufacturing. So I hope that domestic production manufacturing will be there in India, which is which will help our country to go on an international pedestal. So I would like to thank uh, Dr. Kale and Maharashtra Academy of Sciences for inviting me to share my thoughts on the revolution. And at, at, I, I, I now work in Aizar Tiripadi. Aizar is a new institute, just five years old. We are in a transit campus. So we just have a very small research activities, more teaching. I have one student working on lithium sulfur battery, Sneha Mandal. She is an integrated PhD student. And most of the other students are uh, in the BSMS students do a small short term project. Shinoj, Bagarusa, and Murgaraj. And because Isaac is also doing PhD, but he's working on heterostructures for 2D materials. With this, let me thank all of you. And uh, I, I would be happy to answer any questions related to what I spoke. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for an interesting talk. Uh, now, anyone has any question, I'm sure, sir, would be pleased uh, to answer them. Uh, next session is open for question and answers. What I'll do is. You can I'll ask your question. I will stop sharing so uh -huh. that. I can see the yeah, chat yeah. box. There are plenty of questions in the chat box. I can see 13 uh, questions in the chat box. And if I see anything, otherwise you can unmute and ask me. Yeah. Uh, okay, Professor Kulkarni. Sites are beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You can also read the questions, right? The organizer can also see the questions, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, I think most of these are comments. I don't see any questions. Okay. Yes, one, one, question. Question. one question. Yeah, yes, Professor Kulkarni. Tell me. <laughs> you started with uh, very nice, uh, beautiful pictures. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, 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 I can uh, hear. I uh, uh, wrote in the chat box uh, one or two comments. Yes. Uh, but uh, I just want to ask you one question. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead, madam. It is of very general type. Yes. Uh, you showed a picture of bullock uh, cart uh, and uh, people in the villages and their conditions. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, your talk was showing all the cars and uh, crowd in the cities and uh, uh, also high ended cars coming up and uh, projects for that and so much of money and uh, you covered many things. Yes, okay. yes, yes. But uh, to the common man, ah. uh, there will be many advantages, no doubt about uh, this yes. science yes. and technology. Yes. But uh, what about uh, indirectly some advantages will be there. You would say that, okay, the uh, uh, some buses will be going <laughs> to these people uh, or some such thing. But yes. uh, are they really going to get, uh, I mean, tell me frankly, what yeah. do you think? Yeah, madam, uh, madam, two points. The photo, the image was shown to show that we need so much of energy to change these people's lifestyle. That was one point. Exponentially, the energy demands are increasing exponentially. But the air they breathe and we breathe are same. I mean, it's very close to the city they live if they... So, if the air quality is improved by electric vehicle, they get a benefit. Direct benefit, I mean, these people, you know, spend how many? Their per day consumption of money is also very small. So, how many of these people we can uplift above poverty level? Industrial development can only help. That was the indirect point. Your question is right. Yeah, so, yeah. the common man who are already having problem, they may not be bothered whether electric vehicle <laughs> or, you know, electric bus yeah, is yeah. Right in or Sakara bus, or yeah, <laughs> that is right. That is right. Okay. Good, good question, man. Sir, what is the future for uh, fuel cell? What is the future for fuel the cell? For fuel cell, I consider bright. I we, once we have hydrogen energy yes. available, green hydrogen. Government has made this national hydrogen, uh, what you call it as the roadmap. By 2030, they say 80 percent yes. of hydrogen will be green. If hydrogen is available and water splitting technology, also new materials are being continuously generated. So once you have that, fuel cell vehicle will, especially larger range, fuel cell vehicle will dominate. Larger, 
yeah that is what is uh, my personal belief but still problems are there manufacturing membrane we don't have a good membrane we don't have a good uh, uh, electro catheter to replace platinum those are all the issues See, what is the problem in electrolyzer sir electrolyzers water electrolyzer uh, water electrolyzer yes. the problem is hydrogen you get from a uh, fossil fuel is two to three times cheaper so uh, people are not interested to go for environmental reasons see 5 kilowatt 10 kilowatt water electrolyzers are available now uh, whether with the polymer electrolyte membrane or with alkaline commercially available alkaline electrolyzers defense for example they use so much of such water electrolyzers so only in some areas the hydrogen you generate problems are about storing and transportation in a fertilizer industry where hydrogen comes as a by product you can use it so storage issues if you are able to solve it then <coughs> it becomes important so most of these fuels is we talk about you know tanks of hydrogen this time there may not be storage problem because people are already uh, uh, making uh, already filling cylinders and all these things for hydrogen yeah that Still is there, there is a problem there uh, yes, what uh, is the doctor, problem yeah dr kale you are absolutely right carbon fiber based yes. storage tanks which are lighter than steel are there pressurized hydrogen can be stored because reformer is not the right way yeah yes good any okay. other uh, any other questions, questions? because uh, i think yes uh, thank you sir uh, now i would like to request dr m v kulkarni sir scientist from cement pune to spell out what of thanks uh, kulkarni sir please yeah there is a question why not develop the solar motor vehicle yeah solar energy to hydrogen and hydrogen power solar energy is a very diffuse form you know so you can't run any motor directly on that pv panel can be there and electric motors can be there that is question by namdev to everyone okay thank you okay uh, good afternoon one and all uh, it's my privilege and uh, i am very humbled and honored to be here in making the closing remark and to propose the vote of thanks for such a distinguished and intellectually stimulating gathering on behalf of cement family and maharashtra academy of sciences i would like to thank professor vijay mohanan sir for his very informative lecture on advanced chemistry cell or batteries in particular lithium ion batteries for electrical vehicle or sustainable future and throwing light on ev revolution in india thank you sir thank you very much okay uh, professor kulkarni it was a surprise for me i didn't uh, think that you would be there and also uh, mugun desh pande after a long time i still remember with sk date you know we used to go for playing badminton yeah we used to play badminton <laughs> yes yes so professor I'm, kulkarni uh, i'm i'm still with cement so <laughs> it's not be a surprise for you yeah, yeah professor kulkarni was one of our champions of nanotechnology from pune university and iser you know your book about nanotechnology i remember all these old times <laughs> no no okay deshpande sir had, also there with us had a paper uh, also oh, we had a research just now we talked also very good very good <laughs> yeah. we had a publication Yes, you remember? Actually, yeah, when Professor Deshpande was there, we wanted to do some work on biosensors. Biosensors. <laughs> immobilize plant cells, you know, immobilize on the electrode, yes. do some electrochemistry. <laughs> Somehow we could not do it, but yeah, I'm sure with the cement, all of you, I mean, cement will get benefit yeah. by all your expertise. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kale. I hope your project is going well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, it was a pleasure to have uh, you with uh, us, sir. And thank you all participants. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. We have Professor G D Yadav giving a talk on Monday, sustainability, science, our science day. So Maharashtra yeah. Academy President, you know, although he had two, three other engagements, when I called him personally, he told, "Okay, I will." <laughs> so yeah. only thing is, you okay. uh, told me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He is not. Uh, Yes. Yeah. After twenty-two years, sir, I am listening you. When I was in the university, I was listening your lectures on cyclic voltammetry, sir. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. And actually, recently I also had COVID, uh, Omicron. So almost two, three weeks I was away. When Dr. Kale told called me, I was not sure whether I should, I would be able to talk. But it has been a pleasure. 
And anyway, I will come to Pune after Tirupati. So yeah. with all with all yes, Balaji's sir. blessings. Okay, we will meet Please in Pune. Please do it with the cement, sir. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 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 Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.